We are recording. Um, maybe the content, slideshow, stuff. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for joining uh, me and joining us together uh, for uh, what I hope will be an interesting uh, uh, afternoon. Um, what I'm going to do in a, in a minute is, is to um, is to play a uh, uh, a video uh, a TED talk that I recorded uh, last summer at our convention um, called "Knowing Your Why." And this really uh, well, it will be self-explanatory, so I'll play it in a minute. But what I'm hoping to do is not just is to have you listen to what I have to say, but more importantly, after we play this, this is about seven minutes or so uh, to. Uh, have a conversation about how you've what you've taken away from this, and perhaps what your why is. Um, so, let me play this. See if this will play. No sound, Bob. No sound? Nope. Okay. Do you want me to run mine? Yes, so uh, sorry. So uh, always the technical, which is I, um, uh, we're going to run the uh, the video from uh, from the host. I'm not the host, and I think that's what caused it. So, well, that no, shouldn't be a problem. But okay, we'll we'll get you there. Okay. I'm not getting sound either. I don't have a sound either. Uh... Alan, I don't have the sound either. Sorry, guys. Alan, you there? Yes. Did you see Miles' note about optimizing audio? Yes, I know I did. Let me. Uh, I don't, why don't you let me try that from my end? Can you stop me? Yeah, stop it. Let me let me. Uh... Okay, is that yours, Bob? That's mine. Okay. I don't see what Miles was um, talking about. Let me pause the recording while we're doing this. Okay. My vision for the coming two years under my leadership, and I began by challenging myself to come up with an elevator speech for FJMC, a way to describe who we are and what we do in the span of an elevator trip from the lobby to the rooftop. In that speech, I described our recently completed strategic plan 
and how we've helped to implement some of the key aspects of that document. I also talked a bit about what FJMC does. I talked about programs, I talked about involvement in worldwide issues surrounding conservative Masorti Judaism, I talked about FJMC training, and how we provide consultants to clubs and regions and to make each more successful. Ultimately, I came up with what I thought was a terrific elevator speech, a speech that outlines what FJMC is all about, and it went like this. Federation of Jewish Men's Club is a partnership of over 250 affiliated clubs with 22,000 members across North America dedicated to involving Jewish men in Jewish life. FJMC transforms ordinary club events to the extraordinary through innovative programs that enhance spirituality, increase learning, develop leadership skills, and foster fellowships. And I thought that was a great speech. But what I just described to you, what FJMC does, and how it does, wasn't enough. Two years later, I traveled down a similar road. In my farewell address, at the end of my presidency, I gave a speech called, What Does Success Look Like? In that speech, I detailed what I consider to be the key achievements of the past two years. I was proud of what we accomplished at FJMC, and frankly thought I gave a pretty good speech. Yet there is only one paragraph from that speech that anyone remembers to this day. More on that later. In his book, Sinek presents what he calls the golden circle. Whether we're looking at clubs, regions, or most importantly, the men in our community, I would ask you to consider how you reach out. How do you influence behavior? Sinek suggests there are really only two ways to influence human behavior. You can manipulate it, or you can inspire it. He maintains that his golden circle provides compelling evidence of how much more we can achieve if we remind ourselves to start everything we do by first asking why. Now I can tell you that each of you, I can tell you that each of your clubs and regions knows what they do. Usually that's done through programming, often fabulous and creative stuff that we'll hear about in our torch awards and program fair presentations. Your clubs and regions also know how you do it. Again, we'll get some detailed advice during the FJMC conventions, leadership training events, and so on. And yet, and yet, can each of you explain why you are doing what you do? Why does your club or region, or FJMC for that matter, exist? What is your cause or belief? Why do you get out of bed every morning? Why should anyone care? Most of us start from the outside in, going from what we do, like a description of a program, or how we do it, the nitty gritty. And if we're really lucky, why we are doing what we do. But, and here is the takeaway message here, men don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Men won't get involved in the activities of your club in region without having a sense of purpose, Frankly, if you don't know why, you really can't know how. Most organizations have metrics to track the progress of what they do. In our case, it's membership roles, program attendance, financial statements, but we have poor measurements to ensure that the why stays clear. Now, I told you that my farewell address may not have been ideal because I spent the bulk of it talking about what we've done. Yet there was one thing I said that in that speech that resonates to this day. I said, it's traditional for an outgoing president to leave an inspirational word or challenge for the future. So my friends, I want to leave you with not one, but two words, two thoughts, two challenges. The first is this, and it's from the heart. Guys, I'm worried about your health. There are simply too many overweight men here at the convention and in our men's clubs. And in the spirit of this Shabbat Matot, I want each of you to take a vow, vow to see your doctor, and lose the weight by the time of the next convention. Now that was 12 years ago, and to this day, many of you have approached me with how this remark inspired them to take charge of their health. I didn't talk about what I was asking of them or how to go about it. The why was that I cared about each of the men in that room, and I spoke to them from the heart. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. 
I concluded that speech in Chicago with a challenge to our leaders to dream. I said, I have one other word, one other challenge, the word and the challenge is to dream. A number of years ago, there were dreams about Hebrew literacy. There were dreams about Yom HaShoah observance. There were dreams about increasing the awareness of the mitzvah to fill in, and more. It's now your turn. Dream about how your men's club, your region, and indeed how the FJMC can reach the next level. Dream how we can continue our work of involving Jewish men in Jewish life. And most important of all, take a look inside each of your hearts and minds and make those dreams a reality. So let us go forward and dream together. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Thank you. still unmuted. Uh, thanks for, for watching that. I hope uh, you found that uh, meaningful. By the way, uh, that Hine Matov uh, was written by uh, uh, one of our friends here in New England, Paul Davidson. Uh, I think that was his voice on the tape and uh, just another wonderful thing that we, we can do in men's club. So, uh, you know, I, I, I try to, to uh, challenge you all and us all to think about why it is what we do. And uh, I want to just um, just go back. Uh, whoops, sorry. Let me go back to sharing the screen. They made me stop it because I think of the. So maybe we could uh, unmute uh, people. And what I'd like you to do perhaps is let's have a conversation about some of your whys. I mean, why do you do what you do? And you know, this of course is in the bedroom men's club conversation, but um, I think this certainly applies to us in, in our daily lives as well. Um, why, why, why are you involved in men's club? What, what makes your heart tick? And, um, why is you, why? Tell me some of the whys of your own clubs. Um, um, you know, just sort of chime in. Uh, For me, Bob, the, the why is, is more global, if you will. Uh, I, I love conservative Judaism. I think it's, it's wonderful, but I'm very concerned about its health and its ability to continue much longer, and I, I am a member of FJMC, and I'm active in FJMC because I think it's the best way to save and promote conservative Judaism. Okay. Other, uh, other, other wise. What are some of the other things that get you out of bed in the morning? You know Barney Kaplan? Yeah. You know Barney Kaplan? I know yeah. Barney. Yes, who's asking? <laughs> So I echo, I echo what, what uh, Alan Budman said that um, pretty, pretty eloquently, and I don't have a lot more to add, but uh, I'm <laughs> so very concerned about the future of uh, the conservative Judaism or liberal Judaism in general, and whatever mm -hmm. I can do to uh, preserve it is uh, what gets me out of bed to work for FJMC. Mm -hmm. Bob, it's Miles. So I, 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 I echo what I've just heard, but I think one of the ways to do that is to uh, inspire your kids and your grandkids to be uh, to live good Jewish lives. And so the way to do that is to be a good role model for what it means to be a, a Jewish man. I think that's what FGM, FGMC helps us with, enables us, and teaches us how to do. So that's my why. 
Bob, it's uh, Steve Broder. Right. For, Steve? Yeah. For me, um, I enjoy helping people be more of who they might be. And that's both my profession as a psychologist and as a Jew, I enjoy people becoming more fulfilled Jews, um, more knowledgeable, more um, just getting more out of it. And um, FJMC has been a good way to help people do that. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? So can I, if I may? Hi, Barney. Uh, speak. It's good to see you. Um, I, I don't know if people realize, Bob, Bob and I went to medical school together a few years ago. See, Barney and, looks younger than I do, but uh, <laughs> we're both hanging in there. <laughs> well, by the way, Bob, if you would look at the last issue of Penn Medicine, mm -hmm. look at the last issue, the last few pages, look just beyond the, the obituaries, just oh. beyond the obituaries. Not in the obituaries, but past them, and you'll see that's, that's part of my why. Okay. They, they featured a little article about me. It was, it was very nice of them. But here in South Jersey, um, the South Jersey Men's Club, I've been involved with men's clubs for over 30 years, initially with my own men's club at, at our synagogue, uh, because I wanted to integrate men more into synagogue life. And then more recently, you're probably familiar with the South Jersey Men's Club. And if I mention Mike Perloff, that's usually a name that resonates. Yeah, we know Mike. There is an old adage about all politics is local. And to a certain degree, uh, Judaism is local. So what, where South Jersey Men's Club has been extraordinarily successful is uh, getting men involved with local Jewish projects. We're probably more affiliated with the local JCC, which is a very successful JCC, but by bringing in speakers to talk about what's going on in the local Jewish community and getting men involved and in doing things locally. Not so much thinking globally, well, there is a place for that. And perhaps because many of the people here are leaders in the national movement. Uh, but I think to really get people involved with your club, I think you might have to emphasize more what's going on in your own communities and getting them involved with projects so they can see the results of what they're doing right then and there. Uh, then looking at the big picture. Of course, big picture is always very important, but the results, I think you have to look for results locally in what you do. And again, we've been very successful in that regard. Other thoughts? Well, I, I kind of go back a lot of years. So when I started the men's club, it was really to help my synagogue and, and didn't know much about FJMC as such. Uh, and the synagogue was, men's club were taking on projects with the new synagogue and so I got involved in that way. And from there, uh, I started to understand that we've got clubs all over the region. At that time, we had big region and, and a lot of clubs. And I started to mix to see what other synagogues were doing. And it still was kind of a selfish reason because I was concerned about my congregation and my men's club. Uh, but as I started to reach out, I found out that we need to help each other and, and men need the need to get together. Uh, what happened, oh, a number of years after that, while I was involved in men's club, uh, the, the women's movement started to take over and I started to get concerned that the women are gonna start running synagogue. And so I got even more involved in, in men's clubs. And, and uh, in fact, it probably started with, with, I heard of a group, I think it was in California that a bunch of men went out and beat drums and a whole bunch of stuff uh, to show men's movement. I spoke to my rabbi about it and uh, we discussed it. And I got even more involved in men's club because I felt that it was necessary that the men stay involved. As I saw in my own synagogue, women were starting to come in and, and of course the minions were getting so that there were almost more women than men. Uh, and I, I felt that men, that we have to spread this Judaism and keep our men involved uh, in, in that fact. And so it got me totally involved in, in the men's club movement. And as I went along, uh, for me again, personally, it was making friendships and greeting and getting information and see what's doing all across the country. And before I knew it, it was involved all, all across the world. 
And so men's club became a, a really a big part of my life uh, just from that little starting of, of feeling that men uh, have to be men. And uh, our programs as we went on over the years that I've been involved uh, has been in that direction. And uh, I still have problems with the Me Too movement, but uh, I guess it's something that's necessary. <laughs> Other thoughts? So I, uh, when I put this slideshow together, um, I, I, I put down a couple of thoughts uh, here as well. And it's interesting because um, I think a lot of this we've just heard. Um, we've heard um, Jerry just talking about the fact that uh, uh, one of the things that makes, and you know, these are the things that make my motor go and they get me up in the morning. And, you know, I think you know, provided a venue for male friendship, um, I think particularly nowadays, um, you know, we have uh, a psychologist on the line, but I think Steve might agree that one of the biggest uh, mental health issues, particularly uh, for, for men is loneliness and uh, providing that kind of a venue for male friendship is, is a, is a really unique thing that we can do. And I think a very important why. Um, and at the same time, enhancing the Jewish experience of our men. And I think that uh, to expand that, and I'll, I'll, I'll enhance these notes after afterwards, but uh, you know, we heard earlier that uh, uh, to, you know, to inspire the, the Jewish living of our, of the next generation uh, really is important that we model that. And so that by having a venue for uh, a men to have a reasonable Jewish experience uh, will also uh, enable us to model that for, for our children and, and for our grandchildren. Um, uh, Jerry also mentioned that uh, one of the things that started him in a, this was, was to be of service to the synagogue, um, uh, to the uh, financial support and also to be service. I think, you know, many, many of our clubs, uh, I know my club at Temple Emanuel is very active in the ushering, and uh, uh, and uh, we we heard earlier about supporting Israel. Um, and uh, I didn't include in this list, but we heard several people talking about the fact that one of the things that's important to them is to maintaining the the, the strength of conservative Masorti movement. Um, and uh, by doing the things that we do in our clubs, I think that's very important as well. Um, one thing that I didn't hear, and uh, I, I think that's something that really is, is very important to me is, the, you know, personally and as, you know, as a recipient of this, as well as uh, someone who, you know, is involved in the leadership of our clubs, and that is that um, we really, the, the, uh, the opportunity to develop leadership skills uh, is, is, is one of the motivations that keeps me going in men's clubs. Um, you know, it was... Uh, Traditional. I'm not sure it's still the case so much now, but there was sort of a, uh, a, a stepping stone that one became the a leader in one's men's club, and then one moved on from that leadership position to a leadership in the in the synagogue itself. And um, I think traditionally many synagogue presidents were at one time presidents of the men's clubs. Of course, now we have both men and women leading synagogues, and I think they probably come through women's league in a similar way. But um, I can say personally that. Um, my leadership skills in my professional life in terms of running a medical practice or, or serving as uh, uh, you know, I was chief of pediatrics at my hospital and other leadership roles, really the skills that I learned in men's club gave me that, the skills to be able to do that as well. Um, I think Barney mentioned uh, that being involved in the local community, uh, and, and this is where social action is important, whether it's in the local Jew Jewish community or, or even more generally elsewhere, uh, I think is a motivation that for, for many people. And um, the other thing I didn't hear, and, and again, I think was really important for me is that when I'm in a, in a men's club event uh, of any sort, um, it's a safe place. It's a safe place to say things that you may not feel comfortable saying in other venues. Um, it's certainly a safe place to uh, share in a hearing men's voices kind of a venue. Um, and we also find that it's a safe place to try new ritual skills. Um, you know, we have many examples of people who have, for the first time, <coughs> the Birkat Hamazon, or for the first time since their bar mitzvah decades ago, have read a Haftarah or read Torah. Um, and um, it also, again, we have the opportunity to be teachers and students and, and doers. Uh, 
So these are all the whys that when I was thinking about this talk that, that prompted me to, uh, keeps me going in the morning and keeps me uh, involved. Uh, uh, you know, Jerry's been involved uh, uh, for most of his, most of his, um, how old are you now, Jerry? 21, 22? 23. 23. Jerry is a uh, leap year baby. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, for me, uh, being involved in men's club has, has been one of the defining things of my life. And I think these are the many reasons, the ones that you shared and the ones that I've included um, here, I think are, are there. Um, and so one of the things that I would ask you all, and I, I don't know that we necessarily need to discuss now, I get to take home and think about, we have all these whys, and I think they're all very important whys, and I appreciate all of your input in that. But then, you know, the question that I raised in my TED talk is that it's very difficult to measure the success of why. You know, we can measure success of a program by attendance. I was upside down. My picture was upside down for some reason. He couldn't, I couldn't hear him. I don't know. He fixed it. No, so I was upside down, but I was able to hear him. And yeah. I kept pushing their turn anyway. It was you fine. Went, you, 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 what, so you're not going to be what a Zoom my call? prescription is. I have no idea. 10, 10. What does that mean? So in, uh, uh, wow. <laughs> so why the THC? I mean, you weren't doing much because, THC. Because they said that it doesn't sound as if it's doing anything. So... Oh. So, um, I told him about my asthma. He says it's not going to be a problem. Somebody, I, I, I don't know who that is, and I don't want to try mine. I've got uh, you have 10 10. No, I already took some. Let me see. No, 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 everybody again. Give me a second. Thank you. So, I'm unmuted again. So, again, what I was saying is measuring success of why is hard. Um, measuring success of a program with attendance or measuring the success of a fundraiser with, with the, the net proceeds is easy, but uh, how do we measure the success of, of uh, support of conservative Judaism? Or how do we measure the success of uh, um, having men get together? I mean, there are ways, and I, I would challenge you all uh, to, uh, and I will try to get this out uh, these these slides out to you after I'm done uh, speaking, is to think about how you can measure that success of why. When you go back to your clubs, um, and you say, "Well, this is what we're about here at our club." Um, well, how do we measure that? Because I think it's important to know if you're successful in uh, in reaching your reaching your goal. Um, and of course, more generally, how do you measure the success of the why of what you do, what you do in your profession, what you do in your family, what you do in general life? Um, uh, you know, there's certainly a good feeling knowing that you succeeded, but it'd be nice to know that there are, there are some metrics for that as well. Um, so um, just in summary, I think one of the things to think about is when you start with why you say, our mission is this, what are we all about? And we, we talked about a whole bunch of wonderful things to be about. And then you can say, well, our vision is, um, we're about these things and our vision is that we will get from here to there. Uh, in some period of time. And what are we promising? What are we promising to our who are, who, who, who are joined with us in, in, our, in our efforts? Um, uh, we're promising that they're gonna have a more fulfilled Jewish life. We're promising that they will be models for their grandchildren. Uh, we're promising that their local communities will be, uh, the Jewish life of their local communities will be enhanced. You know, you can go through that list. And ultimately, and I think that is what, having the beginning of a year start and say, what are the core values of our organization? Our men's club, our, our, our business world, uh, what are our core values? Um, and again, just I keep on putting this slide up because I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. Um, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, and it proves what you believe. Um, you know, I think this is really the, the key thing. So first of all, I mentioned this in my TED talk. Um, I encourage you to pick this book up if you have a chance. It's, it's, it's been around forever and uh, I'm sure it's not difficult to find. Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Uh, it really will ins it inspired me to read it in preparation for this talk and uh, I would really encourage you to do that as well. Um, again, here's that golden circle. 
why do you do what you do? What's the purpose? How do you do it? And what do you do are the outside, but the, the kernel, the heart is why you do it. Start with why. So, um, you know, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, one of the reasons I do things is for the joy that we felt. Um, this is the New England table here in the front uh, of this photo. And just the, the, the joy of doing Birkat Amazon with hundreds of our friends from across the globe. Um, it just, there's just no replacement for it. Um, my email address is there on the, on, on the bottom, Bob Raitman at fjmc.org. Uh, I encourage you to write to me with any questions or further comments or, or uh, anything else. And again, I put this slide up. Uh, I have to admit, I stole this um, from a hospital aid in, in Boston that was in the paper a few months ago. But I think it applies to what we do, um, why we do it, um, uh, probably more than, than anything. So um, I'm uh, pretty much done. I, uh, I'm delighted that you're all here. Uh, it was nice to see uh, old friends and, and my you know, several friends here. And, Alan, I think we can uh, stop the recording and uh, uh, we'll try to, uh, if you write to me at Bob Raitman at, uh, at uh, fjmc.org, uh, if you'd like a copy of my uh, slide deck, um, I'll be happy to send that out. I'm going to enhance uh, that PowerPoint with some of the comments that you all made during this uh, presentation. So thank you. Any uh, last comments before we, uh, before we uh, end it? End it? First of all, Bob, thank you very much for presenting. It was wonderful. I thank all the participants as well. If you would like to present yourself, we would love to have you. You can write to me at A-B-U-D-M-A-N. That's A Budman at fjmc.org. And again, uh, congratulations to Bob on a wonderful presentation. Any questions for Bob before we sign off? Yeah. Hearing none, I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, Bob. All right. Thank